I'm looking for a miracle. Hallelujah. I expect the impossible. Hallelujah. Anybody looking for a miracle? Anybody got a need? And the only way it's going to actually take place is if a miracle show up. The only way the answer is going to be heard or actually be received is if it's a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. We, uh, my husband was saying, we went to visit our sister yesterday at the hospital, and uh, her countenance, I didn't like her countenance when I saw her. And she's been going through y'all since the beginning of the year. Since the beginning of the year, we're already in, what is it, the ninth month? Ninth month of the situation she's been going through, and I dare say she was going through before that, but she didn't know what the problem was. She couldn't identify what the problem was. So we was there to cheer her up and to uh, make her feel happy about it being her birthday. Yesterday was also her birthday. Amen. So we were there to celebrate her. And when I came, because I, I heard something in her voice initially, first we called. And um, I didn't like how she responded in her voice. She was grateful. She was like, thank you. But it was a week. And it wasn't her. Well, I think we gotta go, you know, to the hospital. I think we just gotta go and spend some time with her. So we got there, um, met some other friends and family there, um, and we were able to actually commune and sit with her and just kind of uh, talk amongst one another. And before we were preparing to get ready to leave, and um, I said, well, is there anything else you need? Because she doesn't really have an appetite. So we're praying that God increases her appetite, make her real hungry, make her real hungry. You know, make it be able to stay down in Jesus' name. So we're praying that God increases her appetite. And um, I said, well, is there anything that you need? And because she's asking, well, I want something to taste this way. And I think I need my drink to taste like this. And so we try to give her little concoctions of mixing this juice with this soda and doing these things to make it comfortable for her and pleasing for her. And I said, is there anything that you need? Because, you know, I'll draw what I'm doing and I'm going to get it. Whatever you need, we're going to go get this tonight. Somebody going to be open to give us what you need. Yeah. And she said, you know what I need? I need a miracle. Woo! Yeah. She said, I, I need a miracle. I, I need a miracle. And the way, you, the way she said it, you know, it was when, when you were just at the age. And you're like, I can't take it one more day. I don't want to deal one more day. I don't feel like going here one more day. I don't feel like being in this. You ever want to just step outside of yourself sometimes? I don't like where that is. So I just, I'm going to move outside of me and go on to something else that looks a little better than what I'm dealing with right now. I, I don't like it. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I don't just want what I need. A miracle. I need God to show up right now. Hallelujah. Jesus. I said, that's what I said, the miracle's here. I hear rain. You don't hear rain. I, I hear rain. You, you don't hear rain. I hear rain. Hallelujah. You've been going through the nine month drought. I hear rain. Hallelujah. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Hallelujah. You don't hear it right now. You don't see it right now. I hear rain, Melanie. Just as Ahab was down and Ahab down and he's like, Lord, I need a miracle. I done told him that it was going to rain and I know we're going to get over to him in just a moment. He said, I done told uh, Ahab that it was going to rain and this is Elisha saying, I need a miracle. And so Elisha tells his servant to go and stand out over the mountain and look toward the water and to, uh, far away, far away and tell me what you see. And the servant comes back and he says, I don't, I don't see nothing. And Elisha stays down and he said, go back and look again because you don't understand. I need a miracle. Go back one more time and look because you don't get it. I got to have a miracle. So the servant goes back. And I don't see nothing. And he goes back and he says he does it seven times. Hallelujah. And he goes back and I can imagine when he comes back the seventh time, he said, well, I do see something. Hallelujah. And he said, I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. That it's coming, it's rising up out of the sea. I see, I see something. I actually see something. That's how we need to be in faith. If I don't, if I don't see it so much, and I can't just give up because I don't see it. I gotta go back and look for it again. I gotta remember what God has said because I, I need a miracle. And if it don't happen, a miracle has to be the one that brings it to me. Thank you, Lord. Adjust the volume just a little bit down for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Now, to Hannah. Hannah needed a miracle. Hannah was in a state where Hannah was married, Hannah had provisions, Hannah had family, Hannah had everything she needed for, so we think. Hannah had it going on, had servants. Hallelujah. Hannah had a husband that took good care of her. Hannah was given a greater portion than others around her. Hallelujah. But Hannah was still in need of a miracle. Yes. Anybody ever look at you and say, well, I don't know why you're so upset. You, you, got, you got it made in the shade with a glass of lemonade. Why are you upset? Why are you complaining? Why is your countenance down? You got everything you need. People waiting on you hand and foot. Your husband giving you everything that you desire. And why are you so upset? And Hannah said, I'm upset because I, I went and I talked to my husband because there's something great going on. I know there's greatness in me. And for some reason, I just can't get it out. I know there's something great within me, and for some reason, it's just, it just won't come out. I can't seem to birth this great. I have a hunger for greatness. I have a hunger for something better. I, 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 my surroundings don't mirror what I'm feeling. Yeah. My situation does not mirror what I'm, what I'm feeling and what I desire. I crave something greater than where I am. I'm hungry for something greater than what I have. And I went to my husband. I said, well, well can you help me? I went to a friend and said, well, can you help me? I got this taste that I need to get out of my mouth. I, I, I don't know what it is. Can you help me? There's something that I need to actually produce. And I don't know how to produce it. I don't know what that is. I, don't, I just know it's something in me that I am supposed to produce, not that I'm supposed to receive. There's something in me that I'm supposed to make, not that I'm supposed to get. There's something that I'm supposed to multiply and bring forth, not something that somebody else is supposed to procure and give to me. I, there's something in me. I'm, I'm better than this. I'm greater than this. There's, there's something more in me, and I need a miracle because I, I, I need a miracle. I can't do it alone. Hannah recognized that she couldn't do it alone. So she went to those that she thought could be able to help her. First person she went to was her husband. Surely you can help me. She went to the closest person to her. Surely you can help me produce this great thing. And he said, I can't. The only thing I can do is be your friend. The only thing I can do is give you an encouraging word. I can give you some gifts. I can make it a little bit easier for you. I know how to give you, serve you up some food and give you some money and, and do these other things for you. I, I, that, that's all I got. I'm sorry. Because it's not me. It's not that I won't do it for you. It's not me. The Bible says, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Significant. It went on farther down and said, and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. So this ain't the same as we find out with Job, where he was going to and fro looking for somebody to devour. And God said, hey, have you considered Job? Yeah. It's not the same thing. This is Hannah doing what Hannah knows to do the right way as Hannah knows to do it. And the Lord deciding that miracle shall not come forth. The Lord deciding that that prayer right now shall not be answered. The Lord deciding that that which you desire, no, not today. This is the Lord. The Lord shut up Hannah's womb. This wasn't some hereditary situation. This wasn't some spiritual battle that Hannah was in. Hannah wasn't going into the enemy's camp and snatching her baby back. It, no, it was the Lord. The enemy didn't have it. Couldn't blame the devil. Couldn't blame the devil at all. Could not say, let go of my peace because the devil didn't have it. The Lord had it. Have you ever thought about, just let's relate to Hannah a little bit. Some of the things that you're going here, there, and everywhere trying to figure out. Trying to figure out how am I going to get it done talking to this person and talking to that person and considering with this person and counseling with that person and reading different self-help books and going to this website and listening to this podcast and listening to this minister and maybe it's something with my personality trait and doing a personality assessment only to come back and ain't none of those the answers that you've been looking for because the Lord right. has caused it. Because the Lord is the one that has ordained it. Hmm. Hmm. What is that about? And that's what she did year by year when 
when she went up to the house of the Lord. So Hannah was going to church, y'all. Hannah was going to church weekly. If we go weekly. Hannah was going to church monthly. If we go monthly. Hannah was going to church at least on Easter and Mother's Day and Christmas if that's when you go. Hannah was showing up on a routine that she had. Yes. Hannah was showing up with her own routine. Yes. Theirs happened to be an annual routine. But she was showing up each and every time. But what was different about the previous times than about the time before? What was different about this new time that Hannah showed up? Hannah showed up and she was still upset. And I could probably deal with the situation a little bit better if I didn't have an enemy getting on my nerve about it. I could probably deal with the situation a little bit better if I didn't have these other problems that were provoking me. I could probably deal with the situation a little bit better if all my bills were paid, but they're not. I could probably deal with the situation a little bit better if I was having a healthier communication in my relationship, but I'm not. I could probably deal with the situation a little bit better if the enemy was not on top of me being low, trying to stomp me down a little bit lower. Yeah. You already know I'm going through. Leave me alone. Yeah. But isn't it something that the Lord has shut up her womb and he didn't shut it up in hiding? He didn't hide her by the high, behind his cloak and shut up her womb. But she was exposed barren. She was exposed not producing. She was exposed infertile. She was exposed with a lack. So the enemy could see it. And the enemy thought it was his great opportunity to then try to defeat her all the more. The enemy thought it was her, it, the great opportunity to try to make her oppressed, depressed, and suppressed. The enemy thought it was his great opportunity to try to destroy her. Yes. After all, God hasn't answered your prayer. After all, God has not answered what you've been praying about. After all, God has not granted your petition. After all, God has not met you at the point of this need. Surely something is wrong with you. Something's wrong with you because you've been praying. You've been coming every week. They say, lift your hands, you lift your hands. They say, wave them back and forth like you just don't care. You do it. You've been paying your tithes and offering. What is that, Hannah? Hallelujah. What is that? So the adversary continued to provoke her. Continued to provoke her and said, or to make her fret. Because Hannah had figured out at some point that it was God that held her miracle in his hand. That it was the Lord that held her deliverance in her hand, in his hand. So he was like, oh, you still got a little bit of hope in God. Let me see if I can beat that out of you. Oh, you still got a little desire and trust in the Lord. Let me see if I can wear that out of you. He was doing all of that because there was still some life in Hannah. Hannah still, even though she didn't understand why she wasn't birthing anything, she still knew that she had possibility in her. She still knew that there was hope in her. She still knew that there was an opportunity for growth to come in her. So she held on what she knew to hold on to. And the enemy tried to pull that hope out of her. Tried to pull that trust out of her. Tried to pull that belief in God out of her. Probably tried to stop her from coming to worship. Probably tried to stop her from coming to pray. Probably stop to try to stop her from praying. Probably tried to stop her from reading his word. What can I do if you already are not being answered? Then why should I read my Bible? He's not hearing my prayers anyway. Why should I pray? He's not answering my prayers anyway. Can you imagine? Can you relate to Hannah? Can you relate? So he's trying to stop her to make her fret. Because after all, the Lord had shut up Hannah's womb. And so she went to church like normal. She praised the Lord like normal. And her husband is looking and he comes and they're sitting down there getting ready to eat. And she's crying and she's weeping. And he said, well, why are you, why are you upset? Well, I'm upset because I'm doing what God told me to do. But it doesn't look like I'm going to be blessed. And I see my enemy being blessed all the time. Yeah. I see my enemy growing by leaps and bounds all the time. I see the enemy getting all and getting the awards and getting the rewards all the time. And I'm too, I, I didn't ask for this. I didn't sign up for this. I don't understand why I have to go through this. But somebody else way worse than me are seeming to be rewarded for 
or less than I'm giving. I don't, I don't get it. All I want to do is be, I didn't even ask for the great thing that's seeming to trouble me. I didn't ask for the great thing that's troubling me. I didn't ask for this ministry that's troubling me. I didn't ask for this hope that's troubling me. I didn't, I didn't ask for this. I don't understand why am I being pressed the way I'm being pressed. Why? And I thank you. It's so kind of you to want to try to help me. But I, I'm tired of being in this position. Yes. I'm tired of being in this state. If I could just step out of me yes. for a minute, yes. just to get a little comfortable yes. with not having to be in this state for a minute. Yes. I need relief. I need a miracle. Yes. I need a miracle. Oh, yeah. So she's weeping. Yeah. And she's grieving. She's not just weeping, she's grieving. My sister yesterday was grieving. That's what I saw. Because this time, last year, I was preparing to plan a wedding. This time last year, I was preparing to be with my husband wherever we was going to go. This time last year, I was walking in Orlando, Florida as an attorney, signing contracts, doing things. This ain't what I planned. This is not what I planned. But I remember. During Mother's Day of last year, we were at the rock and she was singing. Use me, Lord. She was singing, here I am to worship. She was singing, here I am to bow down. You can use me however you want to use me. Hallelujah. And us as vessels sing that. But when he comes to use you, we sometimes forget that we sung the songs and desire to be used. We sometimes want him to use him the way, use us the way we want him to use us. We sometimes want him to use us in this capacity, but there's a do not disturb sign on my finances. Don't use me in the financial realm. There's a do not disturb sign in the health realm. Don't use me in the health realm. There's a do not disturb sign on my mind realm. Don't use me in the mind realm. Sometimes we tend to put a caveat on how the Lord may use us. But when we decide to be fully and completely yielded unto him, he can use us whichever way he desires to use us. Because after all, it's for his glory. It's for his glory. So your enemy is able to stand here and provoke and cause issues for you. And sometimes you'll get your mind off of what's going on thinking that it's about you being used. It's not about you being used. But it is about you being used. How about that? Riddle me that. Because a vessel has to be used. A vessel that the anointing is being poured into has to be ready to pour out something. Has to be ready to purge something. Has to be ready to give something. Has to be ready to give unto others so that they can be blessed because of the anointing that was poured into you. So she sat there, countenance, still confused. Countenance, still not sure. If this is going to be my end, and my end is not going to be with this prayer being answered and this miracle not taking place, then what is that? Where is that? How do I find peace in a situation where there is no peace? How do I find joy in a situation where there is no joy? How do I find the sustaining power that I need in a situation where I feel like all I have is left around me? So she sits there with her countenance and her mind. Can you imagine? Thinking, thinking about your situation. And how sometimes you got a puzzled look on your face. Because you wonder, what? Is this it? Is it, is it? Am I being pumped? Is Ashton going to come out at any time and say anything? I got you. Is that, is that, is, I'm being pumped. I have to be. Something is going on. Only to find out that that is your reality. No, no, nobody's coming out with a camera. I wish they came back years ago with a camera. Somebody is late, the cameraman is asleep, something didn't happen. No, no, this is your reality. So can you imagine, which I'm sure you can, deciding if you're going to get settled in this, being your 
your reality and you're going to ignore that calling on your life. You're going to ignore that longing on your life. You're going to ignore that thing that's chasing after you because you don't feel like you can produce it. So Hannah sits there hungry. And during the devotion, it says that Hannah went into a fast. I, 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 I struggle with that. Because had Hannah's prayers been answered, Hannah would have been eating. So no, she wasn't on a fast. I'm sorry. I didn't think she was fasting. Fasting is a deliberate decision. Hannah was grieving. Yeah, that's right. Anybody ever, when I get upset, I don't eat. That's not why I'm thin. I try not to be upset often. I like to eat. Hallelujah. But when I get upset and I become so overwhelmed, my appetite is taken. And nothing seems appealing. Nothing smells good. Nothing sounds good. You can't describe anything that would increase my appetite because I'm upset, because I'm grieving the loss of something. Have you ever lost anything that you never had? Hmm. Have you ever lost anything that you never had? Sure you can. You can lose something you never had. Hannah was grieving the loss of hope of a child. Hannah was grieving the loss of this desire that she wanted to fulfill, but for whatever reason, she wasn't going to be able to fulfill it because after all, it wasn't the devil, it was the Lord who shut up her womb. I grieved like that before. And it's not anything that somebody can answer because it's almost a grief of, I'm at that place of giving up. I'm not going to take my life, don't get me wrong. But I'm going to give up on that hope that I once had. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give up on that light, that, that powerful desire and hunger that I once had. I'm going to, I, evidently, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing it. Maybe this is not what I'm called to do. And when I actually face that reality, then I grieve. Because why was I giving the desire? I didn't go seeking it. I didn't, see, I didn't go seeking that particular thing. I didn't go seeking that particular situation. It was on me. It came and followed me and enveloped itself around me. And it's a good thing. It's a great thing. It's an awesome thing. What is that? So she's grieving and not eating. So she goes and she's grieving and she's not eating. She, it says she sits there at the table. And it says, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten. Oftentimes we read that as if Hannah ate. No, Hannah didn't eat. They ate. It goes on to say in Shiloh and after they had drunk. So Hannah hadn't eaten anything. And Hannah hadn't drunk anything because she's grieving. Because she's that upset. And then it says, at that point, she's bitter. She's in bitterness of soul. And what does she do now? She's already at the place of worship. She's already at the place of praise. She's already at the place of sacrifice. So it says, Hannah prayed unto the Lord and wept sore, a soul cry. A heart cry. And she vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the afflictions of thine hand, and she knew who to talk to now. She stopped going here, there, and everywhere. She stopped talking to her spouse about it. She stopped talking to her friends about it. She stopped reasoning with people. She stopped the self-help books. If I do it this way, maybe it'll work out. If I go that way, maybe it'll work out. She stopped all of that and she went directly to the one who had shut up her womb. The Lord of hope. She went directly to the one that made the body. She went directly to the one that predestined her before the foundation of the world. She went directly to the one that ordered her steps. She went directly to the one that called her and drew her. She went directly to the one who had all power in his hand. She went to the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. She went not to a man. She stopped going to man a long time ago. She said, I'm not going to do what I heard that Jacob's wife did. And I'm not going to do what I heard to the Lord because I can't afford nobody else coming around. 
everywhere. All of that understanding that she had about the situation that she was taking here, there, and everywhere. She stopped taking it to them and she started taking it directly to the Lord of hosts. Because I'm tired of explaining why I feel the way I feel. I'm tired of explaining why I'm going through the way I'm going through. I'm tired of explaining why I'm reacting the way I'm reacting. The only one that understands me is the Lord of hosts. He's the only one I ain't got to apologize about how I feel. He's the only one that I ain't got to apologize about my reasoning. He, he made my mind. He's the mind regulator so he can get through the recesses of my mind and say, oh, that pinpoint right there, that's why she reacts that way. That pinpoint right there, that's why she walks that way. That pinpoint right there, that's why she talks that way. She went to the Lord of hosts. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she poured out. Sometimes we think that we can't talk to God like we talk to each other. Sometimes we think that we can't reason with God. We Sometimes we think, and I even, I even me, I'll get to that Heavenly Father, and I thank you, and I praise you, and then I have to just stop for a minute. I say, you know, y'all know you understand that you all that, and a bag of chips, and a juice on the side. I know you understand all of that. You are the greatest one, but I need to just be straight with you right now. I don't like it. I need to be straight with you right now. I hurt. You Do you see I'm hurting? I need to be straight with you right now. I'm grieving, and I don't understand, and I, I need some help right now, and I need a miracle right now, and I done talked to this person, and I done talked to that person, and I tried to reason it this way, and I tried to share it that way, and I tried to even be quiet about it. I tried to walk around with my mouth shut about it, and I, and I need help. I just need a miracle. I just need you to bless me. I just need you to work it out, and if you won't work it out, I just need some peace over me. I need a mind regulator. I need a heart fixer. I need you to come into the situation and anoint me for it. Equip me for it. Help me to walk through it and sustain me in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I need to be able to, you know, you said come boldly, so I, I just got to come like this right now. This is how I'm feeling right now. This is what I'm going through right now. And I, I need to be able to pour this out. I need to be able to get it out. I need to be able to share it. I need to be able to just let it go because it's been on me for so long and I don't know what to do with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So she she poured it out and she brought a vow and she said, if you give me this thing that you obviously have birthed in me, I'm going to give it back to you. That was the key. I'm not looking for financial gains so I can be on Forbes list. I'm not looking for health so I can be the one, the, the billboard for it. But I'm going to give you glory, whatever you give me. I'm going to give it back to you, whatever you loan unto me. I'm going to give it back to you, whatever you bless me with. I'm going to give your name glory. Well, you know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Why are you praying? Are you drunk? Are you high? Are you crazy? Why are you, why are you doing it like that? And because she had poured out so much, she was able to respond with some sense. You know you have not poured out completely if after you get up praying and then you still snap on somebody, you need to go ahead about face and pour out some more. The military has a term or a phrase and it's called about face. And we as soldiers in the kingdom of the Lord have to start adopting an about face strategy. We just, on some things when the enemy comes to you, you just say about face, uh-uh. The devil is alive, I can't deal with that today. You got bow face, I can't even discuss that today. The enemy coming to you with some fear about face. The Lord has perfected me with his love. You gotta go in the opposite direction of whatever the enemy is trying to show you. You gotta go into the opposite direction of whatever the enemy is trying to tell you. It may even sound halfway decent, but you know the divine will of God. So you gotta bow face. No, I'm going in this direction. I'm staying on the mountaintop with the Lord. I'm staying in the peace lane with the Lord. I'm staying in the joy lane with the Lord. I'm staying in the salvation lane with the Lord. I'm about I'm not dealing with that anymore. I'm not reasoning with an enemy. I'm not talking to a serpent when God told me to walk on him. I'm not dealing. No, I'm not reasoning with no devil. I'm not reasoning with my enemy. I'm not trying to figure it out so he can feel good and I can feel good and he can never be satisfied. The devil is a liar about faith. I can't deal. I can't deal no more. I can't deal. I can't reason with a devil. I can't talk to a devil when I'm supposed to walk on him. When he said that my foot, the heel of my foot, shall tread upon serpents, that means I'm not supposed to be, they shouldn't be this close to me. You shouldn't be nowhere near the helmet of salvation. You shouldn't be nowhere near that. You shouldn't, you, I got on my feet a shod with the preparation of the gospel to crush your head, not to talk to you. I'm not supposed to be bending down, trying to hear what the devil trying to talk about. I'm not supposed to be reasoning with the devil. Did God say that he was going to bless you when I'm down here? Well, I think he said he's going to bless me. The devil is a liar. I'm walking on you. You are you want to identify yourself as an enemy. I'm not talking to you. I'm too good for that. I'm too great for that. I'm too blessed to talk to a devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. About faith. That's why we must put on the whole armor of God. That's why we must go out with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Because an enemy is going to come up and try to talk to you right as you try to pour out. Even at church, come with your armor on. Even at the house of the Lord, did you not see him? Come with your armor on. He's sitting there, the priest, and I'm not calling him my devil, but at that particular point, he was definitely confused. And the reason why the Eli was definitely confused, you can read this in your own time, is because Eli had stopped honoring God the way he was supposed to honor him. Read it in your own time. Eli was not taking care of his house the way he was supposed to take care of his house, which is why he couldn't recognize somebody pouring out their spirit to the Lord for thinking that they was drunk. Where you been, Eli? Or where haven't you been, Eli? You haven't been in the presence of the Lord to confuse me with being drunk. Not in the house of the Lord. How many times have drunk people came up in here, Eli? I'm just I'm concerned. When your job is to take care of the house of the Lord. I'm a little concerned about that. So anyway, she, she, she responds favorably. and says, oh no, my Lord, you give a little respect. No, pastor, bishop, preacher, teacher, no. No, I'm not drunk. I was grieved. In my spirit, I was hurt. And I was pouring out myself to the Lord. You probably forgot what that looked like. You may want to join me. She didn't say that. I'm just saying. That's, that's dicta. Learned about little things that like judges can say that really don't mean nothing. That's my dicta. Okay. Eli should have probably joined her. D I C T A. You should have joined her so he could figure out what that was about. How to pour yourself out to get yourself back on track. So she said, no, but I have not had strong drink, but I poured my soul out before the Lord. Don't count me as somebody that's worshiping the enemy because I'm no longer taking the devil's stuff. Don't count me as somebody that's worshiping the enemy because I'm no longer going to be walked on and slithered on by the enemy. No, 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 no. I poured out myself before the Lord. And he told me that I am great in his eyes. And he said that I am beautifully and wonderfully made. He said that I am the head and not the tail. He said that I am above only and not beneath. He said, no, some stuff I ain't got to take no more. So I'm like, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Is what she tells him. But I poured out myself before the Lord. And as I was pouring out myself before the Lord, he reminded me that yes, that promise that he promised me, he indeed intends for
for me to have. He, brought, he reminded me that yes, what he has anointed me to do, he intends for me to do. So Eli answered and said, well, go in peace, and the God grant thee thy petition, and that, that thou hast asked him. And she said, let thy hand may find grace in thy sight. So the, women, the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. So she got what she needed because she poured it out before the Lord. Did she leave the altar pregnant? No. Did she leave the altar with her prayer answered? No. Did she leave the altar with her miracle in hand? No. Did she leave the altar with the manifestation right there, right then and now? No. But she left with trust again. She left with hope again. She left with victory again. She declared, victory is mine. I am going to birth something great. I am going to do something great. The greatness that is within me shall come forth and it shall not tarry. I am God's daughter. I am God's son. She left with the right mindset. She got her head right. She put her head on straight. She put that helmet of salvation back on her head and started looking forth with the eyes of faith and started seeing. I see rain. Hallelujah. I see chains being broken.
going to be able to motivate him to do what I want him to do. I yeah. to tell you something. Yeah. That God has a great work for you. That God has a great assignment for you. That yeah. God has called you to a greater place. Go ahead and pour out. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mighty yeah. God, mighty God, mighty God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God. Worthy God. Awesome God. Healing God. Saving God. Delivering God. Holy God. Trustworthy God. I can trust you with me. I can trust you with my heart. I can trust you with my mind. I can trust you with that which I see. I can trust you with my lips, God. You're great. You're awesome. You're mighty. Hallelujah. Don't be concerned with that which you're going through so much that it takes your focus off of what God is birthing through you. He's still going to birth it. He's still going to do it. He's still going to perform it. He's still going to answer your prayers. He's still going to deliver. He's still going to bring you out. And not the way you thought that he was going to bring you out. He's going to show you a new thing. It ain't new to him. It's new to you. It's this new thing that's new to you, not new to him. Hallelujah. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us. What is the light affliction doing? What is the light affliction doing? It's working for you. Don't get mad at the light affliction. Work it on, work it on, work it on now. Work it on now. Hallelujah. Pour it on now. It's working for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Can you imagine if heaven gave up? And not 
only is he present, he's able. And not only is he able, but he's willing. Hallelujah. I don't like talking to people that are able to do something for me, but they may or may not do it. I'd rather not. I want to talk to that one that is able and is willing. God is so faithful. God is so awesome. Not only is he able, but he is willing. 